Okay, we will uh, so we'll move on to item number five, which is the potential revisions of the community center rental policies. Um, we both reviewed the uh, document that we submitted. Um, I guess um, opinions or ideas from. Ah. Uh. <laughs> I, I don't know, is there more that you were going to share with us before we got into it, or? Um, I mean, I can, you know, hit some of the just main main points of, of what sort of went into this memo. Um, I mean, it's mostly laid, laid out there, but yeah. um, the recreation department has just been, for the last year plus, uh, looking at the private rental situation in the community center, and, um, just seeing uh, sort of an increase in, in just the parties and uh, that have caused you know some of these issues that I laid out with wear and tear on the building and the grounds, um, some challenges with um, staffing uh, and you know a handful of um, of times when when law enforcement's had to come out, some issues we just really don't want to see you know here in our in our community center and things we we didn't see as much um, in the past and so trying to figure out some ways to cut down on that and um and how to approach these rentals moving forward you know i kind of inherited this system uh taking over in the director position it's just of seeing seeing how this goes it's like mm, this doesn't seem like things are moving in the right direction and um and then there there was the incident uh in april you know where an individual was arrested and on some serious charges and that really We'd already been having this conversation at the staff level about what should we be doing with these with these rentals, and um, they're just starting to, you know, more and more kind of problematic uh, things happening. So that happened, and, and we really just sort of decided we really need to focus on um, possibly revisiting this policy and making some changes. Uh, it's something that we we're not sure exactly what direction to move in. Um, I have my recommendation, which I laid out here. Um, there's a lot of things we can do. We did a lot of research looking at some of the other facilities that are rented out by government agencies like us, some of the other community centers, um, some of the other private rental spaces in Marin and, and elsewhere um, to see where we fit in. And we made some changes um, to our policy already uh, earlier in the year, uh, which are laid out some of the bullet points here on page, on page one. Uh, in terms of our capacity, the hours, the um, how we deal with security deposits and just training uh, staff that are here. But I think there's some bigger questions that, that I would like to see discussed in terms of um, the overall philosophy of what's the community center for, um, how should uh, we deal with um, renting it out to the public and or to, to private individuals for, for private events. Do we need to be doing that? Um, is that an important uh, service that we're offering? And if so, uh, who should that be? Should this be uh, anyone, and anyone and everyone that wants to, to do that or should there be, um, should this be something that we limit to residents only um, and I in my opinion um, if we limited rental of the community center to, to Marinwood residents uh, we would be able to cut down on a lot of the negative uh, elements that have been happening in private rentals without having to um, limit what what the residents can do at these events so um, some of these are listed in here um, uh, top of page two of the memo, um, you know, we could cut alcohol, we could add a security requirement, we could um, limit, you know, hours even more, limit capacity, um, and all those things are, are things that would probably help some of these problems. I just feel like the resident rentals that we have, um, we really don't have many issues, and things usually go very smoothly, and I think it would be a shame to impose some of these restrictions on our neighbors and residents um, that, uh, they don't really cause the problems, and um, it seems like if we if we limited to residents, we would remove the problems without having to limit what um, our residents are able to do with, the, with their community center. So that's that was my uh, feeling. I think that'd be the easiest way forward. Um, but uh, that's definitely something that I think you know this is a little bit would be worthy of discussing at this level and the board level potentially. So. Um, well, that, that helps lay out a little bit. So, Luke, it's my impression that the revenue that you generate from these activities doesn't really keep up with the cost of maintaining the infrastructure 
you, you stated that you're refinishing floors and five times more frequently than you used to or whatever. Um, does that money, is that enough money that it benefits the district or is it just kind of a break even thing or it sounds to me like it's costing money to do it. <laughs> Well, it's hard to say exactly because it's not like the, the funds that come in from the building rentals gets put in a category specifically right. to, to do improvements or maintenance or cleanup. Um, it's just those those projects come up and get and funds get allocated accordingly in the budget. Um, it just, uh, so the, you know, the floor that we had in it lasted 30 years and then um, we replaced it about five years ago, replaced or replaced it, like demolished it and had a new floor put in. And uh, now we've completed our final sanding job this summer, and um, the next time the floor is worn out, it'll need to, something else will need to be put in. Um, hopefully, we get, we get another five to ten years out of the current floor if we take you know really good care of it. But um, that's just one one instance where I think the increase in uh, large parties has had an impact. Obviously, we have big programs. We have a big summer camp that's on the floor. We've got dance classes, there's a lot of things that contribute to the wear and tear in the community center, um, but that's been, you know, this is one area that seems to have been ramping up in the last uh, 10 years, and our, um, so that's that's one specific thing. As far as how the funds or the revenue goes against the expenses of, of keeping the community center up, I, I, and that's hard to measure because there's so many things using the building. Um, I, I couldn't say exactly what the numbers are for that. Um, we could dive in and try to really suss that out, but at this time I couldn't say exactly. And then even with your kind of the handful of measures over the past year, I still see it a difficulty in uh, ensuring compliance with some of these. I mean, and, and unless you're standing there with a badge and a gun, you know, how do you, you know, uh, how do you make people vacate the premises without getting in their face about it? I mean, you know, if, if people are courteous, then there aren't really issues, but you know, it seems like enforcement of some of these things is probably well beyond the job description of your staff. Yeah, it is challenging, and a lot of what tends to happen when um, the renters are not being respectful of the curfew and not taking the proper steps, they know they get told many times, it's time to stop, it's time to turn off the music, it's time to clear out. Um, you know, that, that most rentals they are pretty good and, and help out, but then you know there, there's the occasions where they um, they ask for extra time, which is which we don't allow, um, you know, on day of time of, uh, and and they will just you know the the building attendant is forced to just strongly encourage and say if you go over the time you're going to have you're going to be penalized via your security deposit, and uh, people sometimes just just go late, and then the, our staff have to just sort of wait it out and, and do their best to, to encourage them to clean up. So. You could have security here trying to enforce that. You could call law enforcement to try to just, you know, it's one of those things that um, we, it's a chance, it's an ongoing challenge for staff to try to enforce these things, like you said. I, mean, I, I see the same thing with the capacity. I mean, how is staff going to control, you know, people walking in the door? It's like they don't have that authority to, or, you know, they shouldn't be expected to. No, no more in here and you turn people away. That's, that's, a, that's a difficult, difficult uh, job for someone to try to, you know, your staff to try to... Uh, right, and that's, and that's actually, I think, a really good point, John, because um, historically how we've, we've done the rentals here going way back is they've been smaller, they've been, um, you know, a lot of, of small resident you know, uh, retirement parties and, and different, I mean, a, lot, a whole gamut of different things um, tended to just go very smoothly and we've got someone here just in case the power goes out or in case there's an emergency, they can, you know, kind of alert with, let's see what's going on and um, they might call me and say, hey, we can't get this one, this one outlet to, to work, is there, you know, the breaker box, you know, just things like that. Um, but as far as having to deal with um, violation of policy and, and cleanup not taking place and, and some unsavory elements coming in, and that's definitely changed the nature of, of what our building attendant is having to deal with. And if we, to really be able to get a better control over some of these issues, um, we really need to staff the events differently and have more of a, I think, more of a presence, have more of an on-site coordinator, have 
um, have a little bit more control over these things. And I think, you know, we don't have the staff for that. We'd have to jack the prices way up and hire people to come in and sort of run these events. And I, that's just a whole different um, ball game from, from what we've been doing with, with private building rentals. Um, these things have been like the occasional Saturday. We've got someone, you know, hanging out. Um, but the way the, the events have been going to really curb some of this, um, without making a major policy change, I think we really have to um, have a much bigger staff presence and, and, and be more of an on-site, you know, we're here coordinating these things, which um, we don't have the staff to do that currently. What percentage do you think of the events are um, residents and non-residents? Right now, um, it's pretty 50-50. Like the last week, we were looking through like the last few years. Um, yeah, it's, 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 a, it's pretty even. Much more than I thought. Much more of, of which I thought it would be more local, more resident. And yeah, I um, I think, and you know, partly maybe the way we have it set up, uh, our current requirement is an eight-hour block minimum, and um, I think, you know, I, I I don't know if that that length of time and the cost that that's in. Uh, is you know it might might deter some of the residents from some of those events that they might have that we would be a four hour smaller type thing. They're sort of been going elsewhere for that because we're, we're our minimum is a much a much larger span. So I'm not sure that's um, uh, it's a good thing. Like you know, something we're definitely considering as well. Interesting if it when it's residents uh, limited to residents but offer a four hour block. Mm -hmm. They might get more use of the facility for things like a birthday party, indoor birthday parties in the, in the winter that's and things like that. Mm -hmm. You can see a lot of things. Yeah, and that's been some of the... Make sure the facility is really bringing in that revenue, but with a smaller um, resident. It's it's a great suggestion, I think, because uh, for, let's say, a child's birthday party spending $600 might be a little bit too pricey even for Moran tastes. Uh, versus, you know, if the price was lower and it was only like, a, let's say, a three or four hour block, we might be able to split the Saturday into two events. Um, but um, in my opinion, there are two components to this issue. One is the um, policy slash philosophical one, and then the other one is the uh, financial. And I think to um, understand the financials, we not only need to understand how many residents versus non-residents are renting, but also uh, my understanding is that there are different rates for residents versus non-residents. So even though the split is 50-50, it might be very well that three quarters of our rental revenue comes from non-residents. So that would be an important thing to look at in terms of money coming in. Um, in addition to the revenue, we also have to look at the expenditures always, right? So um, not only when it comes to this particular issue, but also other programs that we have running, it's, it's good to have an understanding of the revenue versus expense. How, how much this is the program bringing in? How much does it cost us to run this program? Which does not necessarily mean that we have to eliminate that program, such as Music in the Park. We know it's, it's not our bread and butter. However, it's a hugely popular community building event and nobody would dream of canceling it. Now, I would strongly recommend having the numbers for the board meeting, for example, because the same way you are posing the questions, the board will be posing the questions. What What is the money coming in? How much are we spending on it? We have to pay the building attendant, we have to you know, fix the chairs, we have to fix the tables, we have to polish the floor. These are all the components that could go into the financial analysis. Now, aside from that, is the, the philosophical and the policy issue, in my opinion, which um, is I didn't even think of this, but I love your idea of limiting the rentals to residents only. After all, it is a community services district, it's a community center, and I'm not sure if it's 100% legal. I think Eric is looking into that. Um, however, if we are not able to preclude uh, non residents from, from renting the facility, we might be able to implement a um, fee structure in such a way that it really does the, the 
policy for us without us having to have the policy. You know what I mean? The, you know, the, the, let's say the breakdown of a salary into two four hour <coughs> blocks, uh, keeping the rental fee lower for the residents versus really increasing the fee for non-residents because we know that this is the majority of our problem scenarios. Um, that could be an option. Also, I would be strongly in favor of um, uh, making sure that the contract is laid out in such a way that people, you know, regardless what your capacity for English is, for example, myself being an ESL, I want to make sure that everybody understands that guns are not permitted here. That um, you do have to vacate the premises once your time is up. There's like no restrictions and. So I think we, we need to put, make sure that these safety mechanisms are there that are clearly visible for all people who rent. Um, and yeah, we, that, that would be definitely within our capacity to, whether through policy or through financial, for, through fee schedule, um, regulate the rental. Sorry for this one. I have one thing to the financials of the fee. Do you bring financials to the board? It might be worth it to just add on a hypothetical scenario if you decide you want to look into um, renting in smaller blocks and having residents only. Like how many more bookings do you think you might get as a result of that? So you have your baseline scenario with all the revenue coming in and you have one where it's residents only and then you have one where you've made some policy changes. It's still residents only but there's some measures taken to encourage bookings. Yeah, we have. We have Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. No. We have all we have all of the numbers and all of this information um, yeah. at hand, and it's um, so you know that the reason and, and for as far as if if the the goal is to keep everything um, status quo in, in, in terms of policy, we have many many things that we are ready to implement um, to you know uh, limit some of the, the negative elements here and, and ways we can um, amend sort of what what we're doing in the details of how we facilitate these rentals. The reason we're bringing this to the commission and then eventually the, the board is, um, is for the, the bigger question is, is this something we want to do? Uh, is this community center something we want to rent out to the general public or do we want to limit this to residents? And I think that's, that's the big question because the answer to that will then determine how we proceed with the, with the policy, with the way we have the rental contract written out, with what the, the requirements, the hours, all of that is going to be dictated by how we answer that question. Um, and staff, on the staff level, we've come up with you know a whole range of, of scenarios and different um, things that we will do, depending on, on sort of what that the answer is to that question. So that's sort of the philosophical is, is what we're looking for guidance on um, when it comes down to what sort of is determined, then, then we kind of, um, we take that ball and run with it and we've got, um, you know, uh, a kind of MB plus C. And, so that we're, we're definitely ready to go on that as soon as we, we sort of, you know, everyone's able to weigh in and see, and see what, what everyone wants to do. As far as the financials, um, we definitely can, you know, say this is this how much revenue is brought in by the non-resident rentals, this is how much is brought in by the resident rentals. It's not clear uh, that changing this policy would result in just the resident revenue we brought in from this year or last year because um, a lot of the non-resident rentals are booked farther out in advance, uh, so a year out versus sometimes um, some of the rentals will come and book two weeks out and there won't be anything available. So it's hard to know what that's going to look like if we were just renting to residents. We may see a lot more resident rentals just because people um, may not be planning as big of events and, and taking the year to, to do a big wedding reception or a, you know something like that. So. Um, that's that's sort of an unknown that we wouldn't really be able to <coughs> predict until we see how it plays out that you know that first year or something. Um, but I, I do fully agree that, that you know we can look at that and and, and this, this philosophical question may or may not be hinged on the finances. I'm, I'm not sure you know how we'll, we'll manage to see what everyone thinks about that. Um, it's like yes, we think this is really important, but oh, it's going to cut into the revenue too much. Let's not do it, I, I, that's just an interesting, um, those two things to, to weigh, but definitely have all of that available, um, uh, you know, for, for the board meeting at this very least. So. I mean, if, if we're here to discuss this and talk about that philosophical question in my mind, I can't really separate that out from the fiscal impact. I don't know how any of us could, I mean, if, I don't have a sense whether that's 
a 50% reduction operating costs or a 2% reduction? I have no idea. Well, just to give you just the bare, you know, so yeah. say the, the rentals are fairly even um, in terms of resident, non-resident. Right. The price difference is about double for the non-resident rental rate. So um, non-residents being charged $1,000 versus like five fifty um, for uh, or 1200 versus 600 that's that's what we're looking at so $1200 for a non-resident rental um, eight hour block versus 600 for a resident rental so that's that's basically you know we're looking at the rentals bring in Eric you, is it, it'd be a third two thirds yeah and you know so because it's half the cost a third of the total revenue would be from the residential wall two thirds of the total revenue even though they're half of the uh, I understand all that, but I mean, what's the percentage of the revenue generated over the year? Like, I, I don't know. I, this needs to be put in the context of the whole. It bring revenue gross yeah. gross revenue on rental savings last year was about forty eight thousand. And so, what percentage of of that is that of the revenue that we generate for the year? Well, we only fee service revenue. Like, if it's if it's negligible. If, the, if we're talking this is a nominal number, then then fine, I understand that. But if it's our a total, our total revenue, revenue is over six million. So so this is peanuts, is what you're saying. Well, but this let's let's just keep in mind that the six million revenue, you know, probably fifty percent, if not more. I'm sorry, I don't have the numbers off the top of my head. Are taxes? So it's non non fee revenue. Mm -hmm. And then you know you have to also further subtract the humongous operation of uh, summer camps out of this because that's quarter million dollars in profit, pure profit. Right. So I'm sorry, we should not be talking about profit and, and I, I just, I just setting, wanna, but, uh, to, you know what I mean. It okay. feels like ill-informed for me. I don't feel informed. Like if if you're saying it's a negligible dollar amount then that's good to know. But if it's not a negligible dollar amount, then I would want to know that and that would influence my thoughts on it. But so do we I think when you look at it in that perspective, then yes, you can consider it a negligible dollar amount. I think when you look at it in the big picture as to can this district afford to call any revenue a negligible dollar amount, then my answer changes. Because I, I don't think that we're in such a broad fiscal position that anything is negligible per se. Right. I mean, it all certainly helps. We don't have large coffers that we're sitting on in the back. Um, but, but it might, when you present this to the board, it might be nice to to show this as a percent of the overall operating budget and like where is this? Is it 0.5 percent? I mean, it, it, I think it would just help the conversation. Um, I had a couple other comments, which was. Um, do, do we think, it sounds like what you said is you're not sure if this would create more opportunities for more residents. It may or may not. The so feeling on um, our level is that we would um, likely see uh, an increase in resident use of the community center just because of the more availability. Um, that, that's, so I don't know, I don't expect us to have the same frequency. I don't think every weekend would be booked. Uh, at all, but I do think that we would see an increase in resident use while we would see an overall decrease in, in the number of rentals that are going on, right. um, which have been ramping up you know, steadily in the last right. decade. So. Um, I feel a little ignorant to ask this question, but in, in our mission statement, is, does it explicitly say to serve residents at Marinwood? Does it? Do we know that? Oh, jeez, I just looked at the mission statement and I I, mean, um, I, I, would, I will look it up. Okay. I, I think it would be important that if, there, if this was a policy shift, that it still remained consistent to the mission statement. Um, and then I'd be curious, what do other CSDs do locally? Do, do they have this problem? What are they limiting it to local residents only? I, I'm a little... I totally sympathize what you're saying, and it sounds absurd, some of the things going on. At the same time, I can't help to feel in the back of my head that, like, uh, like what, what is this, a private country club? You know, that, like, we're being exclusive. Well, and, and I don't want to, my brain to go there, but I think, you know, Eric, you looking into the legality of it, if 
if we could even, if it's even legal to do we, this. We were, we were sort of that. Yeah, process. I think that's important to do. I, I would not want to be in the newspaper right. you know, being right. like exclusive, exclusive. Right. like that's all the Dixie neighborhood needs on top right. of everything else. Right. However, have, having said that, what you pointed out, when you pointed out to the mission, uh -huh. our mission does specifically say that we provide various services to the residents of the district. So provide fire protection and emergency services to the residents of the district. To provide street lighting services to the residents of the district. To develop and promote recreation programs and activities which satisfy the majority demands of the residents of the district. And develop making park areas and recreation facilities. Preserve open space for the enjoyment of the residents of the district. Right. That's good. But that said, the counter to that is all of our programs are open to everybody. We get a large number of non-residents in the summer camps. We get a large number of non-residents at the pool. We get a large, you know, I mean, so it's, uh, there's an easy counter to that, mm -hmm. too, because how it's like, okay, well, our mission says we're going to serve residents, yet in practice, we serve a much broader community. And right? I think that has been increasing, the, the percentage of non-resident participants in our program has been increasing over the last decade or so, mainly because of the appeal of the extra revenue our, our district gets. I mean, we could very easily scale back the summer camps or limit the pool use only to the residents, but that will make uh, sustaining the pool operations impossible. And, and we would be losing you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars in revenue on, um, on camps. So, as always, it's not a black and white thing. Don't, I, there's something about the exclusivity that doesn't sit well with me. I, I've rented spaces in Fairfax, I don't live in Fairfax. Like, that, that doesn't seem to be an issue anywhere else. Uh, I, I, yeah, I don't know. It's if there was a way we could continue to serve the, the neighboring communities as well, but do it in a way that was um, that, that worked for us. I, I would prefer that as an option. I but I totally hear your challenges. I just yeah. I think oh, another oh, another sorry. sort of walk around around this uh, residency thing is you could uh, look for you know a, a resident who would sponsor your event if you're a non-resident. This way, we at least have this link, um, you know, with the community because it seems like historically people who live here and and interface with the staff um, throughout the year treat. Um, the staff and the property with due respect versus you know people who may not have the vested interest and I just you know one one night by liars you know I have to say yeah. uh, I I think there's a lot to what Isabella said in terms of you know a lot of this growth happened as opportunities to increase revenue and a lot of it was focused during the time when the district had a lot of revenue problems, the last economic downturn, you know, and staff were getting laid off, downsized. Uh, we were operating in the red for a, an entire fiscal year where, you know, more went out than came in. Uh, and the rec department at the time did find a lot of ways to bring in other revenue being, you know, through increasing the camps, uh, more aggressively marketing the rental of the community center. Um, things along those. I, I asked the same question shortly after I started of, you know, why the eight hour versus shorter blocks? Um, and my understanding at the time, which I do understand, was there was A, yes, it was a, a revenue generator, and B, there was no issue filling eight hour blocks. They were being filled regularly, but if you book a four hour, it was a lot harder to book another four hour to fill the remainder of the day. So even though you could do shorter events, it's hard to time those out and to book multiple shorter events in the period of the same day, um, which I get, which makes logical sense to me, uh, and it is harder. So you lose out on some of those opportunities to generate more revenue, which was a bit of a goal of a lot of this growth at the time, that uh, there was no problems filling up full days with a single rental.
the challenge is filling up a full day with multiple rentals. We could solve it though pro probably by, you know, maybe allocating, you know, let's say two weekends for split Saturdays and two weekends for full Saturdays, you know, do something like that depending on the need. If, if there is a larger need for eight hour rental, keep three Saturdays for I mean, this this is just a technicality. Yeah. I think at the end of the day, we're coming back to. But I think when people come looking to rent this space, they have a specific date already in mind, and they're not saying, "Okay, we'll do it on this weekend, and I can do a half a four hour rental." You know, it, it's the mark a significant event, and it is on that date. There are some that are a little bit more generic, um, but most of the things that come in in terms of private facility rentals are for a very you know there we get calls about. Is this date available? As opposed to what dates are available? Um, probably five to one. And we try to push. When somebody says, uh, you know, is this date available? We say no, but this date is. And uh, that date won't work. So, uh, you know, and Luke would have a better handle on Carol, especially, would have a better handle because she's the one who interfaces with those calls. Uh, I don't deal with any of that because I'll just mess something up in the computer system and they don't want me touching it. But. We could separate that and if, you, if a decision is made to do residence only, then just see if the calendar doesn't fill and you have some thoughts. Of, sure. We can look at that later. Just, just to gauge the commission's yeah. um, feeling about this, I sense that um, there is a need for more information to make an educated decision. You would all I don't know, I, I get it from John Campbell to get the, am I correct to understand that you would want to see this part of the equation as well, or would you be ready to voice your recommendation to the board at this point? No, I, I think more information is required. I, I tend to follow Luke's recommendation in the end that if we could make it for a community um, event, I mean, you know, members of the community, but even at then, when you start thinking of school children or, you know, something like that from outside the area, it's, you know, I, I don't think I want to be turning events like that away, so I, I definitely think we need a better understanding. I, having those fiscal numbers, you know, I think help, and the other issue is, is if we do change things and it, say it did become a residence only, then there's going to be a, a time lag through that before you kind of can really pull accurate numbers because mm -hmm. it's been like this for so long that, oh, I didn't know that's what we do now. So And things you know. are booked ahead probably for next year, right? Right. So no, not as much right now no? because we stopped taking events with the exception of things that are kind of more on the annual events like X group books the hall for a crab feed every year. So we haven't stopped those. But uh, we've been talking about this as Luke said for quite a while and when this other incident happened we said okay action is needed now. Uh, we do have some still but we've cycled through a lot of those because this was you know kind of back in April we just did. We're going to stop taking future events until we fill this, figure this out more, with the knowledge that there's like a handful of spots available for the next six to eight months, with some more things filled. Um, to your point, it would take, in theory, a year from that April to really say, okay, now what is the impact from this point moving forward, where the only events are events that have happened since we've done this change, assuming you do this change. Uh, but my understanding, and Luke, please shoot me down if I'm wrong, is we've managed to fill, we've gotten to a point now where there are some open gaps in the schedule, uh, kind of in the foreseeable future for rentals. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 Um, I, I just want to say one thing briefly. Just, um, we're, I think, uh, to bring it back to, to the big question, um, for the for the staff, what what I would say is, is sort of going on here, and what really came to a head with uh, the the event that happened in April is the the nature of Marinwood's um, private rental situation has has changed, 
and we need to catch up to it. And one thing that um, the, my recommendation here, limiting to residents, you know, the, one way to go, um, will allow us to kind of move forward without making major changes to how we approach rentals. Um, in, in my opinion, and based on what we've seen in, in evaluating the kinds of uh, rental movement taking place. Um, absent that change, um, I think no matter what, you know, there's all sorts of different ways we can do hours and schedules and fees, and, and we have a lot of information and a lot of um, plans to do that. I'm not looking necessarily for, for the, the exact rental policy, you know, here today that, that we move forward with. It's more, if we're going to continue things, um, where we're open to the general public, then the way that the recreation staff is going to have to approach rentals is going to need to change in terms of our staffing, in terms of how much time commitment is going to go into these. Um, if we're requiring security, we're going to be interfacing with security companies, we're going to have a uh, higher level of training with um, the, the building attendants, we're going to be interfacing with the renters um, in, a, in a more, um, it's going to be a more time consuming meeting and, and going over things and walking tour. There's just gonna be a lot of things that's going to change um, what we need to do as a, as a staff to ensure that these rentals go smoothly um, if we're gonna to continue to, to operate the way we've, we've been operating um, open to the general public, I, I believe. So um, the, the, the proposal at hand, um, I think is, is one way that we could avoid making, adding all of that to our, to our rental program um, but absent making that change, which I totally understand both, both sides of it, we would definitely, uh, this is going to be a much bigger time commitment and staff commitment to continue moving forward um, with renting out the community center um, in order to ensure that we do not have um, major incidents taking place, law enforcement coming out and, you know, um, people uh, brandishing weapons and, and whatnot at, at the community center. So um, the nature of rentals has, rentals has changed and, and this is one way to address it. Absent that, we're definitely going to be, you know, taking a lot of other measures. I'm just wanting to. That's that's why that question is at hand. And as far as the, the details of, of how we approach hours and prices and everything, that's something that definitely can come can come down the pike. Um, but it does seem that we're kind of on the borderline of uh, this the safety issue, not only for staff but the community as well. If if there are events where you know, the issue you had in April or there are people under the influence of drugs or alcohol that become combative or, you know, if I'm just strolling through the neighborhood at night and my, you know, it, it seems like things are starting to get to the point where we need to put some kind of a rein on it to just, you know. Well, it's like, is, is that what this community center is for? Four. Is that one of the? Is that is that a? And I think that's a question I asked him here. Is is this an important part of our program um, to to have a space where people can have a, a big wild party? Um, not not wild, it's not be wild, but just is that an important thing? And it may very well be. But I'd like that sort of. I'd be curious to hear weigh in from from everyone. Is that an important part of our charter? And, and is um, is that and some of these elements that are that are coming with having big parties in our community center. Is that something that, that we're comfortable bringing into the neighborhood and into our into our community center? Um, so, I, I'm curious. So I I think you you made your your case very clearly, and I think we all hear you, and I don't think anyone disagrees with you at all. Like I think no, I that we yeah. yeah I think that we. We are open to your suggestions and we value your input because you are the you know, front and center at this at this issue. Um, I get the sense that you know to make such an important policy decision, um, the commission also wants to examine the the financial impact of it, and I think that's more to understand to to kind of see the complete picture and. I, I would venture to say that you would be willing to make a clear recommendation to the board at your next commission meeting when you have all the information in place. Am I correct to assume so? I believe you. Well, I would like to see it. I mean, right. I would like to see the I mean, commission. You will recommend yeah, it one way or the other. You will, you will recommend something to the board, whether it's you know yes or no, but to 
to make some kind of recommendation, you would like to see the financial data, correct? I, I had some other questions. I mean, I, I think this is a big um, decision. Did yeah, you have something? I, I, I don't, so to answer your first question, I don't know, because I don't know what we're gonna get next month. We might say we want more information. So I don't, I don't know, but um, it's not, to me, it's not only financial information, no. it's, it's more than that. Um, and this, your summary is anecdotal, which I appreciate, but can you give me a sense of like what percent of events has there been problems at? Like I don't know if it's- Oh, it's definitely small. I mean, it's, it's, like, it's a small, it's a very small percentage. I'd say of the community center is rented um, at least once a weekend, almost the entire year. Um, we uh, have maybe three or four events a year where we have um, an, an issue, like I mean, whether it's a, a major noise complaint or or the sheriff is called for um, a you know a, an issue that needs to be dealt with. Um, yeah, maybe maybe three I'd say events out of the entire three, three entire out of the year, year. Um, that we're dealing with that. Um, so it's it's not a, it's not a large percentage so at all. It's but it's rented Friday and Saturday. Uh, sometimes Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Sometimes just a Saturday. So, so it's um, like one hundred and fifty. So three out of one hundred and fifty events a year. Yeah, so that that's a that's probably a, a fairly accurate percentage. Yeah, it's pretty low. It's so it's low. However, it only takes you know and that and, and again I'm not I'm not this is just one one idea but it's it's yeah I'm not trying to paint the picture. Then we've got you know the cops here every weekend. Not not at all. It's just but but the um, but the question is um, you know at one event you know when something happens like what what happened in April that's what we're saying. Well, what what are, what are we what are we doing here and, and do we need to re revisit this? That's that sort of the work. I mean, but but that said, a resident only policy wouldn't necessarily prevent somebody pulling on a sidearm. I mean, it still could happen, so that doesn't address that head on. Uh, no, absolutely, no, it doesn't. And you could still get noise complaints. I just, I just, I think that's an important number also to bring to the board. If it, if it truly is three out of 150 events, that's not that significant. Um, and then who would be impacted by this most? Um, like, who, who do you suspect, that if we did limit this to residents only, who, who might not be able to rent a space? Um, I don't know how you say this word. You said you're including multiple quinceaneras. 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 Like, are, are those events from neighborhoods that maybe don't have a community center that rely on this space to, to have those events? Oh, and I, would, would those be limited because of this policy? Um, I couldn't speak to that. I, I have no idea um, of all the events we have that are rented by non-residents. I imagine um, we are not the only option for any of the non-residents renting our building. Um, uh, there's a lot of rental, rentable spaces in the area and we're in, um, but there's no way of knowing uh, that if they didn't have our building to rent that they would be out of luck. There's, there's just no way of knowing that. I think, and finally, I, I would also be curious, um, have you reached out to other CSDs or community centers to ask them about this situation? Have they had this situation? Like, how often does it happen with them? Like, what, what are their mitigation measures to prevent this type of thing? Uh, yes, we have. We've, we've uh, reached out to um, a lot of our fellow community centers in Marin and our colleagues, and. Um, there are um, a whole range of, of different approaches that the other places have. Um, some do require security at their events, uh, uh, you know, licensed security for events over a certain um, attendance number, or events that uh, have alcohol, or events where the the honoree is under the age of 21 or something like that. So there's designations like that where that's part that's built into their policy. Um, but yeah, there's there's a lot of things like that. Some places have that requirement, some places uh, do not. But uh, our concerns with um, you know things outlined here are not unique to us, and it's a challenge with a lot of the other community centers. And these discussions are happening elsewhere as well. So, have you encountered any other community center that has taken this policy position where it's residents only? 
Um, I believe uh, the only other place nearby that has a residence only policy on, on facility usage is Belmarine Keys um, and possibly Strawberry, uh, but their policies have been changing. So um, to get back to on that, but most of the community centers are um, open to the general public, uh, but just have a um, price difference for resident and non which, which we do as well. Correct. Yeah. Okay. Belmont Keys is an odd example too, though, because they're a, they're a hybrid. It is a CSD because they have a few latent powers having to deal with like the keys and dredging and things, but they're they're also an HOA, um, and I think the COD kind of works the HOA side of this a lot as well. When that's not the case here, so um, to your point, just making sure we're comparing apples to apples mm -hmm. is you know looking at public buildings. Yeah, you know, not like like we're not even comparing what the Lucas Valley HOA no, uh, community no, center is because it's a totally different right. conversation. They're just not bound to the same things right. that we are bound to as a public agency. Thank you. Yes. Questions. No. And you've been waiting. No, I think I'm. You know, now I'm. I'm sort of neutral on the policy. I think, um, I think the financials are, are interesting. I'm not sure for me they'll be the, the final piece that helps make the decision, but there's been a lot of really interesting questions asked today, and so well, I think for me it's just sitting with it a little bit in terms of coming to a decision, right? Is that your intent to come here looking for um, approval? Um, I think uh, our intent is that th there's, this is a, it's a challenging um, issue and I think that the building rentals and uh, the, coming into this position, you know, a year ago, a little, a uh, year and a half ago, um, seeing it with, with a different perspective and saying, okay, well, like, what, are we, what are we doing here? Um, and then being faced with some of the challenges inherent in, in you know, having this be a part of our programming um, has brought up a lot of questions and a lot of, um, so looking for direction, I guess, um, in terms of once we as a staff know, um, you know, from, from the commission, from the board, um, this is what uh, we'd like to see with Marin Woods private rental policy in terms of, um, you know, who are we renting to and what our philosophy is on, on use of the community center by the community or um, people not within the community. That will help us as a staff um, cr create the, uh, the agreement and the rules and uh, plan staffing and training and how we approach that um, to be able to do, do our best job. Right now, it, it seems like things have just been going on inertia for a very, very long time and these, this whole policy and this question has not been addressed uh, as far as I can tell since I've been here. So um, just looking for uh, direction and um, from, you know, from above to say, this is what we want to see from our community center. That'll help us go, okay, now we can take that and, and, um, and know how to approach it from a staffing level. Well, I think direction and just thought-provoking discussion. You know, these have been good questions. These have been good conversation that allow us to, to you know, think and talk about this a little bit. I think, I think one more thing that's missing um, is the current policy. The current rental policy would be helpful to have. In terms of, in terms of what? The, the policy in terms of? The current rental policy that we have, it would be good to have included in this package. You mean the actual the actual rental application and, and what the rules and regulations are? Yeah, we can definitely include that. Um, I feel like, and you know, absolutely, that is something that I think is subject to change based on if we make any overarching changes to our. So it's one so of the things. So my yeah, but my reasoning for it is if we decide to go the route where the community center will remain open. Um, for rental to a general public, then you know we can either go this drastic way and say you know no non-residents, or we could make a number of specific um, 
policy changes to, to the rental policy, you know. I, I mean, I'm sure that the no, no guns is specified there already. <laughs> I know it's just a law, but yeah. Um. <laughs> and, um, you know, the various other measures that could, could be put. And just, just a suggestion that, you know, it could be an option. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Definitely include that. Our, our perspective on that was just that one sort of follows the other. Um, we will be making, definitely wanting to make changes to the rental policy based on um, sort of what the what the feedback is from. Oh, I see. Right. And I would, let's not confuse terms. We don't have a rental policy. Uh, we have, you know, rules and procedures of renting the building, which is in my opinion a different thing we don't have an overarching policy this is you know the goal of renting the facility is or you know the objectives or why we're doing it or you know that just doesn't exist no no there's no rules i mean the right, rules right, yeah, right, yeah, what, yeah, what yeah. Is and out. we had talked actually about including that and just kind of felt for this kind of broader conversation that that was getting pretty deep into the weeds and obviously that was going to be subject to change based on some of this broader discussion and feedback uh, I'm happy to send it out um, where it stands right now, so that everybody can kind of look at it. Uh, obviously, it was on the website for a long time, and we took it down basically because we're not taking in application for the building at this point. Uh, again, except for these ones that are going to be these regular, recurring uh, events and rentals that we do every year or every quarter or whatever the case may be. Um, but a lot of that would be subject to change, and then. You know, it's just kind of the rule, you know, must vacate premise by X time. That's, you know, a lot of it's just what you'd expect, kind of standard boilerplate language, but uh, we can easily email it out so everybody can look at it too. And Luke, I would also like to see the impact or your opinions of the impact it has on your staff, whether you're now spending more time dealing with issues that come up or training or Psychotherapy. Right. I mean, is you know, is it is it a negative impact? Is it just you know, if you didn't have to do this, what would that allow you time to do? Or so you know, because it seems like it is a strain on staff, just in, in the impressions that I get. And, and, and I yeah, absolutely, definitely could could go into that a little bit in more detail. Um, just to answer that real briefly. Uh, it's getting challenging, the, the nature of some of the events. Um, it's, it's a challenging thing for some of our current staff to enforce some of these policies, depending on the group that's here. Um, we've always relied on uh, staff that are already part of our program uh, to, to be our facility attendant. We, don't, we have not hired um, outside uh, people specifically for that um, job historically, and that's one because they're in our office. They're in our, you know, there's something we have a, a close relationship with, and the people in our programs are already been vetted through um, working with us in other capacities, and that's worked out very well. Um, however, so the way things are going, we we would have been better served in some of the events that have happened in the last couple of years with a more security guard esque type of staff member, which we just don't currently have in our, you know, um, on, on the on the roles, and so um, probably. Keeping the policy, um, or the, keeping the, the way that we're renting uh, the building um, would, I think, necessitate a, a change in how we staff the, um, our facility attendants, I, I'm, I'm pretty sure. Um, I can totally picture Carolyn wearing full armor. I would never let Carolyn be a facility attendant. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, I'm, and I'm serious, that's actually something I, that, that I'd be very, I'm very strategic with who I will allow or who I will schedule for those events because uh, it, there is an intimidation factor. You've got you know 100 plus people here um, with whatever the program. There's only certain individuals I think would be able to you know to handle that. And, that and is an issue. It I is. Mean, it is, absolutely is. This is a good point. I'm not sure having additional security staff on site in the room. I don't think that's the, the community here. And that, and that's why I bring it up. I if 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 the if the commission said you know were to say. No, we really need to keep the community open. The community center open to the to the general public, and, and we shouldn't be limiting the residents. Uh, absolutely, would have no no issue with that moving forward. They would just we would just definitely need to be making some changes to how we approach the, the rentals. This particular, you know, just is like this is one way that I think we could keep things a little bit the way we have been running them historically, 
uh, wouldn't be to sort of make this, this, this change, but yeah, there, there might be security guards on the premises. Armed security um, on the weekends is, is one thing that we would likely see moving forward with if we keep things status quo. And, that's, and I agree with Dan that that's, that's not the look I want to see, but it's, it's almost like if, you, if your party checks this box or checks this box or checks this box, then, then, then yeah, you need these things there. And maybe it can, we can just amend it that, you know, we don't have events that are over this size, or we don't have events that serve alcohol, or we don't have events that, you know, you, you know, you, if you want to do these things, find somewhere else to go. But mm -hmm. well, if you meet the parameters of our guidelines, then you're welcome to come in and have a good time. I got a couple of other comments. John, you were talking about like straining resources. So is it straining resources? Because it's what you said was that this was three events over the course of 150. So that doesn't sound significant to me, but then you just said it is straining our staff resources. Oh, in terms of, uh, so I guess we need to differentiate between when we've had law enforcement come out because of, of a, a physical altercation or a crime being committed or something right. versus an unruly crowd that's making it very challenging for the building attendant to get the rules to be followed and get the, the rental cleaned up and out on time, you know, without incident like that. Those are all challenges, but one is involving, you know, a much bigger, we've got, we've got police here. One is that um, our building uh, facility attendant is having a very challenging time um, you know, getting through the night and getting the, the renters so, to get out on time. So that's, you know. that's the exception. I just, I just want to make sure I understand, that is the exception. Which is the exception? Uh, one of your staff having a hard time getting through the night. It's happened three times this past year. No, I say the three times is we've had the law enforcement on the premises because of some major incident. Okay, okay, so more than that, it's been just more ongoing issue. Absolutely, just the, the okay. and, and I say I, I... That wasn't clear to me. Oh, I'm sorry, yeah, so those are yeah, two separate things, um, one being uh, the rentals are challenging for a staff member to to just regulate. So, so how often is it just a challenge? Um, that that's a I guess uh, that's a hard hard to measure. Um, I think there's challenge inherent in in the nature of the of, of events anyway. Um, just big, big crowds in the building um, and just trying to get people to. All the rules and, and stop the event on time and keep the windows closed and keep the volume down and all that. It's a constant challenge. It's just just in the nature of, of having events. I think that's not unique to us. It just that is with it. So the amount of times I get a, a phone call, um, hey, we're having an issue. You know that that one I'd, ha I'd have to really think about how many times um, I'm really having to help assist the facilities I need to get through and giving them alternatives. Is it definitely, is it definitely more for non-residents? Yeah, I mean, I'm just but obviously just absolutely, trying yeah, to absolutely. the scale of the issue. And, and so absolutely it. is the answer to the, it's, it's definitely more it's, than non-residents. It's, um, without a doubt, the, um, the rentals that are uh, taking place rented by Marinwood residents um, are run very smoothly without issue. That's the overwhelming majority. Um, the rentals that um, pose challenges for staff to to get the to get through the night, get the rules followed, have the building cleaned up, everyone out on time. Um, more often than not, it's a, a a rental taking place from a non-resident. That's not to say all the non-resident rentals are challenging or are bad, and not all the resident rentals are perfect and go without a hitch. And all of these are just gen general, um, are, are you know, generalities. Yeah, I would, I would just like. And I don't have da like hard data. No, right? not this right. number versus right. this number. But it, but it does make it difficult for for me to assess the issue when it's it's that's not really clear. Absolutely. Um, yeah. No, I, I understand that. Um, sorry, I. Had a, Couple of things. Um, the um, before we move on, yeah. can I make one point? It's, it's right on topic, which is yeah. I think we should consider though whether we have to staff to the percentage of events that do create a risk for the community, or whether we staff to the average, right? So say we say it's three events a year where there's 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 crimes, there's violence, right? So are we do we have to set up our staffing and our policy to manage to that level because you don't know which event's going to turn, right? right. Or say. 
20% of the events are hard to manage. But don't you have to have every adequate event staff on site then for every event? To come Absolutely. So it's almost like whether it's 10% of events that are affected or 30% of events are affected, I think you still have to staff to the more difficult Oh, yeah, we scenario. do training and the staff, uh, it's, it's, the assumption is that there's going to be um, a major issue or an emergency that is what we assume, and that's the that's the training that we go through with staff and, and the protocols and what they're you know watching out for is the worst case scenario, and that's very rare that they end up having to deal with that. But that's what we're planning on so that we're so we're not caught off guard when something happens like that. So anyway, I just wanted to add that to the discussion. Thanks for letting me jump in. So we. Murray County Parks, we, we allow like filming and other things happen in our preserves, but we we condition the hell out of them where it's like if you want to do it, you got to jump through all these hoops and, and inevitably a lot of permits don't go through because people don't want to go through all those conditions to do that event. Um, not to say that we want to create that atmosphere here, but I mean, I think it's a fair question. Like, do we want to have big blow up parties here? Like, maybe we don't. Like maybe that's not who we are. Um, and then um, finally, like, yeah, it just, it just, I'll just say it, like, it feels a little like a gated community. Like, I didn't move here or live in a gated community. And, I, like, the idea of, like, not allowing people to come in from other communities, no, nah, it doesn't, doesn't feel good to me. So, um, I, I think, I definitely want to hear more details, but, like, I think if you could be a little more clear with some of the information, it would be helpful for me to try and make a more informed decision. Yeah, no, I, absolutely. And, and just to, for me to make sure I'm hitting those points with, with future information provided, could you give me some of the bullet points of like, I mean, one is um, well, so the financial impact yeah. on the you know, overall budget, proposed changes, what would they likely, um, how would they likely affect our you know, revenue, et cetera. But uh, what, what, some of the other things that you specifically like to see, John? Um, well, so definitely dollar amounts. Like, what are other um, CSDs or you know similar community centers doing? Um, and and then you know who who's impacted by this? Um, how often is it a problem? Like, do we? You know, these are all questions I already asked. But it's I, like I don't have a sense whether or not if we um, create a residence only community center. Like, do all the problems disappear? Like, I don't have a sense of that. Is it, um, is it legal? Is it yeah, is it legal? That's a, that's a good one right there. Uh, yeah, absolutely. I and mean, these are all things I could um, definitely uh, hone in on and, and give, you know, I can't, I can't get an exact numbers for everything, but definitely give you a, yeah. a, a little more clear picture. Um, as far as the, the gated community, I, I completely understand um, where it's coming from. And I'm not I'm put, trying to push this so hard. It's just, it's just one, one, um, option we came up with that would probably be the easiest thing without having to take a bunch of other measures and without having to um, really limit what opportunities the residents have for, for rentals, which we typically don't have incident with. So it's just like, are we going to, what are we going to impose and how is that going to affect the residents? Is this something that we're trying to like play around with? We don't really want to, you know, impose a bunch of measures that, that maybe weren't the fault of the resident rentals, which I already, you know, talked about here. but. Uh, um, as far as the gated community, one thing is, yeah, we're open to the public, our programs are open to the public, the park is open to the public, our events are open to the public. This is like people inside our community center using the kitchen, the tables, the chairs, the floors, and that's, that to me is a little, it's just, it's, a, it's different and, and I... But if I, every other community center in Marin is allowing the general public to use their space, how are they doing it? Uh, in terms of what? Like how are like, they... Like I can go rent a space in Fairfax, I don't live in Fairfax. Absolutely, yeah. yeah so how, how is everybody else making it work and like why would we be the exception where we we can't allow anybody else in oh it's not that we can't it's just that um that may that may be a, a move that would um allow us to move forward with rentals without making major changes to what we allow residents to do in, in the building so but, i mean you, i think you understand what i'm saying though like, absolutely does, yeah does fairfax yeah. have cops like at all our events like how do they do how do they make it work so yeah, what's the name of the facility in Fairfax? So maybe well, it's a Fairfax yeah. Community Center. I mean, but, but I think every community has one. 
I don't, I, this is not like, a, like you said, it's not eating dust. No. And don't, it don't, might be just interesting to look at. Yeah. Oh no, and we do, and we, and we have that information in a lot of these uh, community centers do have armed security at um, the events that go over 100 people have alcohol or are honoring an individual under the age of 21 as the primary you know, honoree of, of the birthday party or whatever it is. Um, so you're seeing, you're seeing security at other community centers. Um, so I think but that's the kind of details, like for, for me to make an informed decision, I, I would like to have a better understanding of that. Um, if, if it means for us to be open to the general public, then pretty much every other community center where it is doing X, Y, and Z, and that's what we would need to do too, that would be helpful to understand that. Oh, absolutely. We talk about whether we would need to add a full-time staff to match the level of you know, attention being given to that, you know, by some of the community centers and other recreation departments, how, what percentage of their um, staff are dedicated to rentals, facilities, you know, is that something that, um, yeah, we definitely provide, provide that information and how, how they're doing with that on a staffing level and, and on a, you know, for, for sure. But if there was, say there's 30 community centers in Marin and we're like one of three, that's residents only, that, that would also be interesting to know. Like where 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 would we sit in relation to all the other community centers? Yeah, I mean we definitely try to get all that information if that's you know. Um, I think it's an important decision. I, I just don't want to be like this minority of uh, you know we're in community centers that just like residents only. But, you know. Okay, good enough. Yeah. yeah. Anything else? I think that's it. So we will uh, put this on you to come back next month and uh, tell them. No, it's actually, I, I was going to say that it. this is actually been extremely helpful to hear all, all of your perspectives on that's That's the whole point of bringing this memo forward was just to, you know, to, to get to the commission away and inside. This is actually extremely beneficial to hear, you know, both some of the, the, the concerns and some of the uh, things. So I just want to thank you guys for, you know, for reading it and, and giving feedback. So. Thank you. Thank you.